Tom is next on <laughs> Dead Time. <laughs> Is it time? I'm checking. Time's up. So how much time just passed? Two minutes. Thirty seconds. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thirty seconds. <laughs> if a boy doesn't have something to do for thirty seconds, He's what's a twelve, there. eleven, or twelve, or thirteen-year-old boy going to do? Their minds are calling. They're going to find something, right? Okay, and that's what we were. <laughs> we were on the way. Still are something. And that is what you want to avoid is just ha don't have dead time. Now, how do you not have dead time? Have a plan. What, have a plan. In whatever activity you're doing, uh, do a little extra. Have a little extra piece to it. That's one thing that you can do. So that, or, or you can back up and redo it. You can get a boy, but have an extra piece that a boy can do if he gets done with the activity that you're doing. So he's got something to do. You can have something extra just in your kind of bag of tricks or something, like having a few ropes there all the time. And if a boy gets done with whatever you're doing, hand him a rope and say, okay, practice a knot, this knot, that knot. Uh, you can just keep the boys going. Put a boy working with another boy, if there's another boy that may need some help. If he gets done, have him, have him help another kid, especially if you've got older scouts helping younger scouts. It's a good way for them to learn leadership and stuff like that. But you want to just avoid dead time. And so have things for kids to do, either just a few things like ropes or something, some kind of activity where they can practice a skill or do something on their own in case they get done. Or have something extra in whatever it is that you're doing. When I was a teacher, we used to teach kids a lot, as a counselor, I guess, we used to teach kids a lot about different things, we would always go in with two or three extra activities because we never knew how much time it would take, whether the kids would catch on like that and be done, or whether we have six things and we barely get through one of them. And so we always went prepared. And that's, that's what you want to do, is you just want to be ready so that boys don't have idle time. They're happier that way because they're not fidgeting and stuff like that. And, and they're doing something. They're doing something that's constructive. So that's avoid the dead time. And keep things moving when you're doing activities. Keep it moving so that they can they'll have fun. It, it, it makes it more challenging if they're having to keep going. Like our little activity here, I would probably try to have two or three of them so that you got boys who aren't standing around doing nothing. Uh, just different things like that. Just keep boys going because physical activity and, and keep doing, that keeps them from getting themselves into trouble and starting to poke each other. And then things go down there from there. Okay, that's it. Could I yes. Question? Yeah. Um, and how would you apply the control method to that? I mean, I, I'm struggling to, to find the line between letting the boys lead. I, I don't see them taking that initiative to have a, a backup activity or something, you know. I have a question. I don't know if I actually said okay, it. Okay, well, sense. <laughs> if you've got a boy who's doing something, doing an activity and leading that activity and trying to teach everybody else how to do it, I would, as you work with your boy leaders, I would talk about this issue, you know, we want to keep everybody going. So, if you're saying, if you're doing something, and you've got a boy who's got it done, ask, tell your leader, you know, whoever's doing it, ask a boy if he would help somebody there. And, after you get done with an activity, 
you know, on your Tuesday night or your Wednesday night, sit down with the boys who are doing the activity for a minute and just kind of debrief a little bit about it, talk about it. Or if you have a leadership meeting sometime during the week, talk about it. But sometimes immediately after it might be a good time to talk about it. And just ask them how it went and what they saw and whether they saw there was a problem. You know, and, and if they saw that one of the other kids was not participating, you can talk about, well, how could we get him, get him going? I mean, that's, it's never going to be perfect. And, but you've got to give those boys a chance to try to figure out how to solve that issue. And then the next time, they can try something and, and maybe say, hey, George, why don't you help John? He's, he's, having, he's having some trouble with that. Would you come over here and help him? Just something like that. And you can talk about it beforehand and make those suggestions to the guys. And then afterward, you can talk about it a little bit and see if, the, if you, especially if you saw something going on, you can bring it up to them. Tom, I, I think exactly there. what you're teaching us, I think we should be teaching our, our um, Deacon's Corn Presidents. Yes, yeah, right. I mean, they need to be knowing this because they're struggling with managing a group. Right. Teach them how to. And so in your, in your meetings with your boys, you talk about these yeah, kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, for the same sure. same exact things. Yeah, and, I agree, Jesse. And, That's exactly Yeah, and, and as you watch them, it's good, you're going to remember these things. Because mm -hmm. you might not remember to teach this, but as you watch, oh, I forgot the fillers. And you'll, you'll debrief yeah. with the presidency or the uh, patrol leader or whatever. Or whatever. But and use it. Yeah, what right. you're saying, use yeah. that patrol method for sure. Uh -huh. That's the let them lead. Yeah, that's to give them the chance to lead. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our troops in this area only have one patrol, and so it's usually the senior patrol leader that's, right. mm -hmm. that's taking care of that. But he, as he's doing things, you know, talk about how did it go. I and mean, if you could start getting that rapport with that kid, you know, he's going to bring up things that he saw. And it, it probably frustrates him, too, because he's the kid in charge. And yes. He wants everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing, too. So, yeah. Yeah, something that I did when I was a scout nurse, I had a box like that green one back there <clears throat> with just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. I mean, there's little bits of rope and, and uh, boondoggle and all those kind of things. And senior patrol leader, this is for you. When there's something going haywire, just help yourself. That's what it's for. And you know, when he sees, and you, know, you have this wonderful activity, and all the boys like it but one, I mean, it's dead time for him. Well, maybe that senior patrol leader can take him and go get something out of the box to take you know, that time. Like a monkey fist or something. Yeah. yeah. But having just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, but the senior patrol leader needs to know how to use it. I mean, if you had. <clears throat> The hunker down stuff there, it's really easy after they've played it once to know how to play it. But yeah, something like that. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Tom.